Hello, and welcome to episode 59 of the Into 99 podcast, where we've got 99 cards because Commander's number one. I am your hostess with the mostest, Necrozak, joined by Brian, the guy who kind of likes the Selesnia guild, I guess. Dan, the only guy to be able to successfully pull Ch- Pangea apart. And <laughs> our guests for the episode, some gnarly goats, I mean, some gnarly cards, Vincent. Hey guys, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, so yeah, Zach, let everyone know what we're talking about today on the episode. Well, first let me ask, how do you guys brew? <laughs> no, but seriously, we're here to talk about um, how you, we brew our commander decks when the theme isn't super clear cut or we're going off, you know, um, subjects for decks that don't necessarily exist, like, I don't know. We're going into some uncharted territories. Yeah, so what do what do we do when there's a theme that we see that we really want to build around a commander, but maybe the colors don't typically support that type of theme, like a mill deck and rule, or we're building like a tie-in deck around weird counters, so on and so forth. Um, well, so one that's of, kind of... One of the best uh, examples of why you need to consider stuff like this is for everyone... The general place they go to to build a deck is EDH Rec. It's what everyone does at the moment. That's the best site. There just is no other way around it. But with the Walking Dead cards, Zach was brewing Negan, and none of those are up on EDH Rec. I don't know if EDH Rec is saying, hey, we don't agree with this, so we're not hosting it. But you can't find, at least as as of the time we're recording this video, any suggestions for those commanders. Really? I didn't... I. No, no, Rick, no Negan, no Glenn. Those mm-hmm. they will not come up as legendary oh. commanders that a deck list is able for. So again, maybe it's just that they're not technically released yet, or something. But they're or they're putting their stance. Yeah, it it might just be their their standpoint on it. But if everyone watched the stream last week, Zach played Negan, right? So and he won. How do you end up brewing something that just doesn't exist, quote unquote, in the minds? Or if you're ever, uh, we we're at some point going to talk about custom commanders. How do you brew something that you just can't find a deck list for? Yeah, right. That's uh, that's exactly where I was coming from. Uh, something else I kind of sparked that kind of conversation I wanted to have with the guys. Um, shout out to Commander Cookout Podcast. They had this episode for Tiam deck that was really really interesting. It got me thinking. Like, wow, this this deck is really unique, but. You know, what do we do when these themes just don't exist? EDH rec, like Dan said, is a great source, but there's a lot of extra work you got to put in when you want to make these decks that just don't have a theme or exist currently like together. So I think part of our responsibility as content creators is to maybe help newer players or even like players that don't really know how they want to go about things like some of the stuff that we do as individuals to get our decks to completion. Yeah. Well, there's, like you said, there's so many things that go into building a deck. It's not just simply going to a store and buying a pre-con, right? So with uh-huh. your TAM that you just suggested, I have a TAM deck as well. They're they're going to be built very differently. I didn't go off a list with mine, but most TAM lists that you see, because I did look them up, are generally going to be one-on-one counter themes. It's just the most popular theme with TAM because he functions with counters. One-on-one counters are the easiest theme to find. Yep, but if I, don't, sure. if I don't want one-on-one counters, Zach, where do you start? I'm looking at uh, trying to do these weird counters. So like Dan and I have talked about it a couple of times now, my version of time that I'm looking to build is going to be utilizing like awkward counters, you know, things that we don't normally see, you know, like level up counters on creatures with level up. Um, there was like mannequin counters. There's all these kind of weird things. So I was trying to figure out like what do i do when this happens so one of the best places i think to start is kind of um at home or like with your phone or something to be able to jot down like this is the deck this is what i want to do and then just highlighting some things like okay i'm looking for counters what kind of counters exist in magic right now that i'm aware of like as a player you know loyalty counters um you know level up counters that kind of stuff so i think the best thing to start off with is just jotting down the game plan of your deck. You know, this is weird. These are the kind of things I'm looking for. Um, So once you have kind of like a blueprint of this is what I'm trying to do, moving on to a site like Scryfall is a great way to get that going. Yeah, I guess like that would be my my first thing. Because like, I guess like when I, when I go to brew, 
I, I, I'll be honest. I typically go to EDH rec. I get some ideas. But typically when I think of a commander and I think of colors, I go, in my mind instantly goes to these are my staple cards that are going to be in there regardless of Because most times staples are your removal and things along those lines. But like and draw. Yeah, right. exactly. That's actually really interesting because not, neither of those are my staple things. So it's like really cool that like people have the this is my draw. This is my removal. I, I just like that. Like, cause I, if I think of like, so like Zach alluded to is I really love Slesnia. So if I am building a, a new green white deck, I don't have a commander selected. I instantly know that I'm most likely going to be running a beast within and a generous gifts. Yep. Stuff like that oh, yeah. is pretty cool. I generally, for my staples, uh, I use a lot of, depending on how many cards I, uh, or colors are in the deck, sorry, not cards. Uh, I have different ramp cards that I use mm-hmm. as my, my ramp is generally my consistent cards. My removal is kind of, uh, what do I need in the deck and stuff, right? And I personally build a lot of, uh, I don't everything. know, my, mine are more meta-based answers in general, like, in, as opposed to, you know, like I, if I know that a lot of people in my play group have removal, then I'll bring lots of artifact and enchantment removal because I can politics like, hey, get rid of this creature and I will get rid of the artifacts is annoying you or something, right? So I, I kind of right. build a little different with that meta in mind. Well, my skeleton is pretty set in stone. Um, usually I have about 46 lands and ramp, 10 draw, 10 removal. And then if I'm coming up with a new brew, I have about 33. I go into the 33, we'll say, about the theme <laughs> or, or supporting the theme. So like, it doesn't get too overwhelming because I'm not thinking about 99 cards. I'm thinking about 33 and my staples. Um, after I play it, then I can kind of mess with cards. Hey, this is really better or I need to get this out faster. But and you yeah, said I don't, 46 I don't lands? No, 46 lands and ramp. So oh, oh okay. Yeah. I also made that face when I thought it was 46 lands. I was like, wait, or, wait just a minute. Believe it or not, some decks do do that. No decks should do that. <laughs> uh, Ashlyn the Pilgrim? That, that still, I don't know. 38 lands. <laughs> Maybe you want to win with Treasure Hunt. Mm. Don't know that card, so I doubt it. 46 Lands and ramp. Okay, lands and ramp. Okay. I, yeah. I do think a lot of times that even just the way that people put lands into their deck is interesting. Like, I run really low lands, but I run really low CMC a lot. That's the competitive side of me. Like, my more mm-hmm. competitive decks have like 27, 28 kind of lands. Not everyone I'm, runs on stuff like that. That's you, what like, I've started to put You give me too. heartburn when you guys talk about the amount of lands you run in your decks, it literally gives me heartburn because it stresses me out so bad. <laughs> yeah, all you need is 32 to 34 lands. Well, like for, if you, if you look at a lot of my competitive decks, right? Like my average CMC, I think is 1.1 in a bunch of them. So I just have to hit one of the lands or ramp cards. Yeah. And I think my lowest are usually 2.8 or something along those lines. So as long as I'm able to get three lands or at least something to get me there. Yeah. Obviously I'm not going to put something that low if I'm like playing like Boros Angels. Yeah. 28 lands. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, something Brian mentioned um, a few minutes ago and something I kind of want to circle back to is there's kind of a negative, well, at least from my experience, I think there's a kind of negative connotation to people openly being like, yeah, I use EDH rec to brew decks. And I kind of want to like, if you're that guy that is like gatekeeping and, Oh, you shouldn't use EDH rec, blah, blah, blah. That's dead decking. Like, no, stop. So I think, I think Dante, um, actually there was, there was a conversation around this in our, our discord chat. And Dante made like a really good point about it. He mentioned, he's like, so do you, do you blame or do you put like negative stuff onto like a new guitarist that's trying to get like, um, yeah. Trying to learn a new song. Like, why aren't you writing your own songs? Yeah. Like trying to get influence or, or what from listening to like Jimi Hendrix and other famous guitarists. Like it's just the same thing. Like I'm not going off of someone's set deck list like edh rec what i like about it is it gives you percentages and it even goes down to like the one percent or two percent that it's seen in decks that are Mm -hmm. put put up because those one or two cards might be hey do you know what that card that's not being played in the majority of these decks might be a lot of fun well and another like interesting thing about the edh rec method is that 
you're going to build better decks based on EDH rec when you're first starting than if you're just trying to brew. Like, Magic is too complex of a game for new players to just get in and brew cards. So like, many cards up there. Yeah, yeah, like, it's just like, you can go off recommendations, but just trying to... I can't imagine trying to start Magic right now in 2020 and then just be like, well, let me try and sort this out of what I want, right? Like, it's just so... There's so many cards to know. Like, even Brian and I, we both, uh, we did our Zerus before. They're very different decks, right? And that just is an infinite, di- like, across all the commanders, there's just infinite different possibilities of how decks can be played, what they can do. And, yeah, like, you don't always want the orthodox way for sure, but while you're learning, I, I think that finding one of the deck lists online that you like or EDH rec- recommendations and then just going through and playing what you do and what you don't like. Cause that's one of my, one of my ways that I build a deck is after it's built, I like to play four or five games with it. Yep. <clears throat> and then I look through the deck again and I say, what wouldn't I have been happy to draw on turn five? Or what, what did you have in your hand that you couldn't play? Yeah. Another. What, what, what are useless cards that are in your hand? Cause like yesterday I was playing a game on the play EDH server mm-hmm. and I played my Silvala and they're like, oh, I don't know. That might be a high power level. I was like, it's not, it's not a big rampy. Yeah, it's just type Silvala. Of, yeah, but I was like, it's Silvala and Chance. I was like, you guys probably haven't seen a deck like this, and it, that's what exactly what they said. They're like, oh, we're typically used to playing like these like really fast competitive Savala decks. I was like, yeah, that's not how I built this. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the other thing. If you come up with your own brew um, and you go to an LGS, people aren't going to know how to react to your deck. They're not going to know, hey, I need to hold up a counter spell for this card because they'll have no idea what cards are coming, which is also kind of gives you an advantage. There's there's like one tribe you can know basically what it is. It's Slivers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If someone's playing Slivers, you understand that they're playing Slivers. Like they're, you get the theme of the deck pretty quickly. Yeah, it's like with, with certain commanders, people judge the commander. Oh, yeah. They, they don't judge what's in your, in your 99. They're like, hmm. Like, oh, I think... Uh, Oh, your brother's red, blue... Um, Joyra? Yeah, Joyra. Like, she's just so fast. Yeah, he has, he has two. One's a competitive Joyra with the historic draw, and then the other is just time counter Joyra. Yeah, like, it's it's like, whenever I see a Joyra, I always, I always think of that competitive one and just how fast it is. Well, and even, even talking... Does he have two different copies of Joyra, or does he have a 99-card sideboard? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's a... Uh, I, I like his Joy deck. But uh, even talking there, right, like when you see the commanders being judged, it's because people are playing them in such a similar way all the time, right? Yep. Like you know that uh, if I'm playing Grand Arbiter or Agustin, for instance, anyone who doesn't know, it's a four-mana creature, two colorless, and then Azorius, one white, one blue. It's my white spells are one less, my blue spells are one less, and then uh, opponent spells cost one more. You can generally be safe to... Assume that I'm not going to be playing like a group hug Azorius deck, you know, right? Exactly. Like, so, so some people are kind of right in their prejudgment, but again, you don't really know what's in it. You could maybe make it a fun Grand Arbiter deck. I, I don't know. I don't think you could. <laughs> There's, in my opinion, there are like five commanders that should be prejudged. One is Nekusar. Like, Nekusar just, you have to play Nekusar the right way. Otherwise, just why are you playing Nekusar? Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> Nekusar, Gaddock, Teague, any of the Sliver Commanders, because, yeah, they're, you get it, you get the point. Uh, yep. Grand Arbiter, and then... Uh, Urza? Yeah, it was Urza, yes, that was the last one, because, yeah, there's... I still, to this day, I will love if somebody sends me a, quote, fun Urza deck. And it might, might be fun for you to play, but, like, a an Urza deck that your playgroup is like, I had a really good time playing against this. I'll, I'll, I'll build one <laughs> if I can actually find an Urza. <laughs> Oh, Urza's just brutal. But that's the thing. You could, again, if you were going to look at your list, you'd go to Gatherer and you'd be like, oh, buy a Mishra's Bobble, buy Winter Orb, buy Static Orb, buy Howling Mine, buy just all of the things that aren't fun. Oh, I like Howling Mine. Howling Mine, uh, a lot of people don't know the text. <laughs> more and more into my seat every card you said there. Uh, a part of, uh, a lot of people don't know the text of Howling Mine is that if it's untapped, everyone draws. So in Urza, yep. you tap it so that they don't get yep. the draw and you get the draw. Oh, Howling Mine's dope. <laughs> um, so yeah, like let's, let's get back on track a little bit. Zach, what, like, we'll start with you. Like, what is your general deck building process? And like, how do you go if you're not finding things that are 
in your normal wheelhouse on EDH rec or something. Or not on so, EDH rec. So um, I'll give some, I'll, I'll give it like an overview of kind of what I'm doing right now. So um, if you guys don't know, Abzan's my favorite color combination. It's like I, everything that I like about Magic is in Abzan. Like it doesn't feel bad playing white when green and black is near it. Um, it gives me all the kind of reanimation and the colors that I like. So I'm setting through going and building all the Abzan commanders, right? So for me, like I guess like for yeah, my, we're going to Brian's here. Uh, my way of building it, like typically, like I guess when I when I get an idea for a commander, I usually will always EDH Rex always going to be my first stop. But then, like, I try to think of other other games where I've seen this commander played. And how did those people play it? Was there any certain cards that stood out to me that just seemed like they were going to be a lot of fun to play? Yeah, I like that a lot. That's a really good way to look at it. I, I didn't even think about that. But you do see uh, people that you're playing with or playing online with play commanders. You see videos. And, yeah, there's, wow, this looks like a really cool card to play. So... Um, sorry about that. So back to what I was saying, like, I'm wanting to build Teneb in a way that like, if you go to EDHRIC, what do we typically see with Teneb? If you don't know, Teneb the Harvester is three black, green, white. It's a legendary creature dragon has flying. Whenever Teneb the Harvester deals combat damage to a player, you may pay two and a black. If you do, put target creature card from a graveyard into play on... Uh, under your control so typically for this kind of thing we'd expect to see like what a reanimation package with abs in that typically means you know you're going to be throwing your own stuff away and reanimating it blah 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 so i'm wanting to build Teneb in a way where i'm making everyone else mill their cards and discard their cards so that i can actually steal stuff from their graveyards so instead of a personal mill or self mill it's an abs and mill deck which doesn't really exist right like how many abs and mill decks have you guys seen yeah I, not much not much if any so it's what usually I like blue do... that i see mill decks in or where they Exa have blue splashed exactly so when i'm building these decks that are like i'm you know quote unquote unique i like going through and cross-referencing using eda trek even though they might not have a teneb mill deck they do have teneb self mill and they have all the other like you can go so far as to look at themes and you can look up like mill you can look up discard and from there you can start like getting an overview like yeah you're not going to find a lot of green and white mill necessarily but there are a lot of different ways you can you know find some like synergies for with what i want to do so that's kind of how i start brewing these you know more um i guess like corner case decks I, i'll go to edh rec and i'll go through the theme section and start seeing okay this card's in my color pie and it's working with what i want to do i'm going to pull it and like review as i continue to go on so that's kind of how i start brewing when it comes to cards that aren't you know or building themes that aren't typically like what you would expect to see yeah i guess like with with that like i would see maybe even going to like looking at like what artifacts might be like stuff that doesn't have a color because like the mentioning like that like i want to try to force my opponents to mill so i can steal stuff out of their graveyard the first card that comes to mind for me is mesmeric i was gonna say mesmeric orb it's the same thing yeah yeah because that's oh well you're going to have to untap your stuff uh, you're going to mill your stuff so if you're putting out these big creatures you're gonna have to tap all that land um well general card knowledge is a good is a good resource to have for just any kind of deck yep. brewing situation but yeah like i i do think that looking at artifacts and things that can slot into every deck and seeing hey maybe there's an answer that i can get from an artifact instead of like in the color wheelhouse mm -hmm. because yeah like i i think it's a cool idea to do a a group mill abzan deck the best way you can but like zach said your options are a little bit limited yeah so it's finding those it's finding those things where like i said like edh rec is is great for us as commander players right it it gives us so much information it gives us so many like ways we can go about brewing and if you can kind of learn how to use it correctly you can pretty much build anything you're looking for as random as it might be and even if like you can't find exactly what you're looking for like you can go through and see what the colors are doing and how to do it like my negan deck for example negan's not on here and i really like you guys know as soon as he was spoiled i had a deck built i saw day. a lot of people actually very excited for negan that's one of the cards that people just wanted uh even even the people that didn't really like it they're like all right well this would make a pretty cool commander i've seen people I do reskins of the negan. Of people that 
that were excited about Negan. <laughs> I saw quite the opposite. No, no. So lots that. of people, lots of people hated on the secret layers. What I'm saying, but like a lot of people yeah. just understood that like Negan was the the commander choice, right? Like if you were to build one of them, it was going to be Negan. Yeah. Oh like, man, no way. Glenn was Skulk in Azorius. Yeah. That's what I'm going for. That's fair. That was another. That's another one. Like I honestly like. We, we've already discussed this probably a billion times now, but like I'm still excited to build a lot of these other commanders, but for anyone who's going to want to build these cards or proxy these cards and play them, we don't have access to these decks right now. So you Yeah, know, you what just got to build do? your own Skulk deck. Mm -hmm. We so don't have access what, to them because of people's stance. <laughs> uh, I don't, we don't really, I don't really know. Yeah, like, who knows? I, I don't want to say one thing because I haven't done enough research on my end. Again, ma again I, maybe they will have them on, or maybe just people aren't submitting Negan deck lists yet, like, because EDH Rec generally pulls from other sites. Yeah. They uh -huh. don't post their own thing. But again, I also know nothing about how EDH Rec works. Yeah. I don't I don't work at EDH Ex Rec. Exactly, and that's why I, you know, if we're wrong, please feel free to, like, let us know so that in Correct the future... Us. Oh yeah, you just know. me with comments. <laughs> I mean, I prefer not to be hounded. I'm a sensitive boy, but you know, yeah, like, send, just send, send your press. comments to That's Daniel. He'll argue with you. Uh, but so what I, you know, like this was this is my next example. Like I built Negan the day he was spoiled, right? But there was no information. So how did I go about doing this? Like you know, I have a pretty. I think I have a pretty extensive knowledge of the game and of the cards and building commander decks. So. I kind of was like, okay, what do I want to do with Negan? Bouncing Negan seems like it's going to be what people are going to want to do the most. So I kind of wanted to be a hipster, as lame as that sounds, and wanted to not go like lean into that strategy too hard. Yeah, you, know, you didn't like, want to go like, like too yeah, hard, exactly. Conjurer's Closet kind of. Right, and don't get me wrong, like I have Conjurer's Closet in there, and I have Eldrazi Displacer, but those are the two bounce effects I have, and that's it out of the other, you know, ninety-eight card. You, or, you didn't even yeah, bounce him when we played on the stream. You just let him die. Yeah, and just recast him. Yeah. But, you know, that's also because I had 60 treasures. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure City. That's, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to do when, um, you know, like I looked at it and I was like, okay, I really want to lean into the treasure aspect of the of his card text, you know? So what can I do with that? Well, you know, I went and I looked like, uh, Queen Mar is it Queen Marchesa? Yeah. Is she the Mardu? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. she was a like she was a really good example of like okay there is an aristocrats build around queen marchesa on edh rec what can i glean from that to put into my deck that fits what i want to do oh cool you know like i already knew i was going to run like Fleshbag marauder and plate crafter but there are a couple other creatures that merciless I executioner I think exactly one. those yep he's one of the one of the brothers that do the exact same thing um but yeah it gives us like this really good overview of like okay if i play an aristocrat style which is what i was ultimately going to do these are the kind of cards i can use using a commander that isn't the exact commander i want to play and when you're doing this you know you got to keep in mind obviously some of the cards that are going to be showing up aren't going to work exactly like you want them to so that's where you as a player also have to you know refer to your notes like oh okay i i'm sacrificing these creatures but i'm not getting you know the monarch trigger and what have you right yeah so how is this you know how am i going to you know gain value off of negan oh well, i get these treasure tokens what can i do with treasure tokens oh, rival wow. and riches you know like at the very worst case i can win with 10 treasure tokens at the beginning of my upkeep yeah at the very yeah, worst case there's uh we talked about it a long time ago with sherman uh that there's basically two ways to play magic at a high level consistently one is having a high budget for cards. There's just no way around it. If you can afford expensive cards, you can generally beat a lot of people in your playgroup. It kind of is what it is. People get a little salty, but there's no way around. An Ur-Dragon with dual lands versus an Ur-Dragon with guild gates is going to outperform it every time. It just is what it is. The other way to consistently win is to put the time in and look at things that A, work with your meta, but B, just are maybe out of the box that people aren't prepared for, right? You can research the game and have a better understanding of the cards. Spend that time on Gatherer or Scryfall and find... Oh, 100%. Like, that's how I do it. Yeah, exactly. Like, the a good build beats a good budget every time, right? Like, it, it just is what it is. Like, if you have an expensive deck, there are ways to beat expensive decks with real cheap cards. And I love seeing it. I get beat by decks that are worth 
a quarter of like my my budget decks all the time. I just I get blown out by them because people just built them better. They put a bunch of time together, and I just threw together an expensive deck because I'm like, this is awesome. Let's put volcanic on it. <laughs> right? Usually like, I lose because I want to see how everybody else's deck works. I lose pretty <laughs> much every game because I'm like, I want to make 500 snake tokens. Yeah. Daniel yeah, like, doesn't care I about winning. How He's... my deck goes off. I want to see how this deck goes off, and I just kind of let it happen. I like to just flash that I can win at people and then just continue to not do it. <laughs> I'm like, well, this is a crater hoof, and they're like, okay, are you casting? I'm like, no. <laughs> don't, be, <laughs> don't be crazy. You just got to keep two on tap blue mana and then just ride it out. No, that's not me at all. I like... I have like 60 snakes on board. I'm making like 20 at a time and I flash that I have peripherals in my hand and then I just tap out and I'm like, okay, go. And I'm like, why'd you guys kill me? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, but, uh, cause you could have done this. Like, like a gatherer search and stuff like Negan. Like if you're looking at things that are like opponent sacrifice, like you're going to see a lot of, uh, grave pack, uh, dictative Erebos style themes cards coming up and you're going to be able to make a deck built on that a lot easier than, like you said, just kind of, oh, well, I, I'm going to bounce it in and out. Like you, it's kind of a weird flicker theme in those colors, right? Like, right. White gives us, like, white gives us a lot of interesting things, and black gives us a lot of unearth effects, and so does red. So there's a lot of, like, different ways you can go, but the you big thing is, like, die. yeah, exactly. Um, the big thing is just, like, figuring like I, I can't stress it enough like whenever i start looking and brewing new decks like if i if i was to show you guys my phone right now on my note like in my notes section i'll have like to neb dash 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 with all these like points and things i'm wanting to hit same thing for when i built negan i have my list like okay these are the things i want to do treasures uh aristocrats package reanimation package you know the things i love doing in those kind of colors anyways um, it's just like owning and knowing what your strategy is and sticking to it as best as possible. Obviously, when we're in colors that don't fit the you know the deck necessarily, you're gonna have to make concessions. It's gonna have to be like, okay, I'm gonna have to play you know more of a solid color because this is you know this is my mill effect in my Abzan colors. I'm gonna have to do a lot more like colorless stuff to get there, or oh, I have to also put in this. Um, discard effect so I can steal people's stuff. Eventually they have no cards in hand. You know, so mm -hmm. it's just it's it's finding that theme and what's closest to it within your colors. Well, I like, I when I'm building my deck building process is generally A, pick my commander. B, pick what I want to do in the deck. Like, do I want to kill people with commander damage? Do I want to make a bunch of tokens? Uh, do I want to stack the table, right? And then mm -hmm. I build based on what I generally am going to play against. So, like, if I know that uh, this is a deck that I'm going to play against my more casual friends, right? Well, what do my more casual friends run in the deck, and what an like what do I what answers do I need to include in the deck? Do I need artifact and enchantment removal, or are they not? Like, like you can't play Magic with Brian and not bring some enchantment. Brian is the enchantment <laughs> guy, right? Like, if you don't bring enchantment removal, like, you're just not going to have an answer. Like, my Sliver deck, great deck. No enchantment sure, removal no because it's all creature or ETB. Humility! Yeah, that's exactly it. I can, <laughs> like, my Harmonic Sliver can blow enchantments up, but not when Humility is on the board, right? So, that's not really a deck that I would build to play against Brian because, like, I know that he's going to have like he dark steel mutations my harmonic sliver the same thing i'm like stuck without artifact enchantment removal for the rest of the game now right so like i i generally go on that and then i choose how i want to win and what is the like what's going to be the things that accelerate me towards that i i generally try to include draw but if i know that my opponents bring a lot of removal for creatures i don't bring my creature removal i don't pack board wipes in because I know that I'll be able to just outrace my opponent for what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Or I play the long game and I know that I can just be like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I'm just not drawing what I need to do. You you politics with pity sometimes, right? Yeah. Um, Benson, when you're building, what do you, what, like, what way do you generally go? Uh, well, I kind of touched on Gatherer there. The advanced search is my best friend. Usually when I'm trying to find a theme, I'll just kind of type in the same text of one card that I really like. And I go from there. Um, I was telling Brian yesterday that I think I deleted 1,600 pictures of screenshots. <laughs> it sounds like you have the same phone as me. It's every time I'm like, well, this is a great card. Screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. 
My yep. wife's like, hey, do you have that one photo of our son? And I'm like, yo, one second. <laughs> it's going to yeah. take a while. Three years later. <laughs> yeah. 1,800 um, pictures in. Sometimes uh, with Dex, you know, I try to not go way, way off the path. But if there's a different way to get to the same outcome, I can do that too. Uh, one of my best examples right now is I just built a Samuk deck, Voice of Descent. And it was in rage based prior. It was just cruel and rage based. But I don't think people like the combat step anymore. I found out with my enraged creatures that people weren't blocking because they didn't want me to have those triggers. They didn't want you mad? <laughs> yeah, they didn't want me mad, right? Yeah. Don't they get didn't me want twisted. Rage triggers, especially like uh, what Silverclad Ferocid Elms, when it gets dealt damage, everybody sacrifices a permanent. And it doesn't say yep. enough land. So I was like, okay, how can I do this? And then I'm like, oh, I need to do damage to myself then. So I started looking up like uh, Volshock Sorcerer, um, you know, Prodigal Pyr Pyromancer. And I start, you know, okay, yeah, that, I can ping is myself. Is it whenever a creature is dealt damage that it gets enraged? Yeah, so he's sitting Any there pinging himself. Damage. So but Rampaging Ferocidon, every time a creature comes into play, it deals one or two damage to it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so cunning spark mage and whatnot, I'm pinging myself, and then Samut was perfect, because there's more enraged creatures in white, like um, Imperial Cytera, uh yeah, the Imperial one, or Siege Horn, yep. okay. Ceratops, and then Next also- was so good Samut for that stuff, and Rage was such a fun mechanic. Target creature, right? Samut has untapped target creatures, so if I'm pinging myself for one white, I can get another trigger, um, and then I still go in for that combat step, hoping they block. And, uh, you know, there's overwhelming stampede in there as well. So if they do block, I'm going to get my trigger and get in damage. So I kind of turned it into quite the deck off of, uh, at first, you know, an okay idea. But now I think that thing's tuned to just go. Well, and that's like a really interesting archetype. I've never seen an enraged deck yeah. play before. I've seen dinosaurs that have enraged, but. Yes, yeah, so uh, it has a dinosaur, uh, dinosaur thing on EDA track, but it doesn't have anything like I did to it. Yeah. So what is. What I think you did, Ben, that's like really interesting is um, you found a bunch of redundancies, right? Like that's kind of the big thing we, we want in our format to begin with, right? When we're dealing with single versions of cards, we need redundancies as much as possible. And I think sometimes that gets overlooked in kind of like an awkward way, you know, like you, you found your enraged creature. So you have a bunch of enraged creatures. But then how can you constantly get damage off? So, you know, you found, okay, I ran into Prodigal Sorcerer. Now, what else do I have? Oh, here's Cunning Spark Mage. Here's these cards. So you just kind of double down on your redundancy. And I think that really is kind of important about building these weird builds. Right, especially with like Seaborn Muse and, uh, you know, even with, uh, there's a couple of 1-1 one -one counters in there. So what is that? Rhythm of the Wild. I can choose to, for it to have a 1-1 one -one counter on it or, or Haste. Yeah. So my dinosaurs, I put one one counters on them, and then for the pingers, I give them haste, and then you know I just got a lot of thick boys that take damage, and I can keep giving them that damage because they have more uh, more toughness when they come out. So it all kind of just folds together. I love that deck. I played against you guys. How about that? This sounds right up my alley. <laughs> yeah, like I I just also really like weird decks. I just uh, built one where I whole point is to skip my turn. It's very fun. Oh. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, it's a really fun deck where I just like try to not take a turn and uh I use effects that are based around me not actually playing the game. Yeah, he's like he's like, I'm really excited to play this. But the salt. <laughs> it's basically like a, the whole point of making it was so that I could play Clash of Clans while I was playing magic with people. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I don't actually have to focus on the game. Yeah, I'll just skip ten turns. Go. Yeah, like Daniel comes up with like a real a lot of really weird weird decks and like he has one that he's working on which i won't i won't spoil i'll let him do that but like it's it's oh, is really... that my november deck yeah uh, I, i'll just i'll say what it is i'm just making a stupid deck because as a lot of people know there's an election about to happen so i just want to make a will of the council kenrith deck where it's all about <laughs> voting <laughs> and then so... I, I really want and just keep in mind that hope has refused to do this I really want her to, like, I want to get two non-foil Kenris and glue them together back to back. And I want her to alter one as Joe Biden and one as Trump. So that whoever wins could be the face commander. But uh, she's just not a part of my idea at all. I was telling Sorry. Brian the other day I'm going to make all the cards red, white, and blue. 
Um, you bring up kind of another interesting thing, uh, Dan. You've been playing the game since Brewing like what? With it's con- <laughs> <laughs> You've been playing since like almost the beginning, right? Yeah, I've been playing since uh, I think like 1996 or 1997. Like so an old that- man. <laughs> so something else I tend to do when I'm trying to brew is like when I was like, like this tie-in deck, right? I instantly was like, hey, what does your tie-in deck look like? And, you know, we talked about what you did, and I, I expected it to be a more competitive build, but I was also expecting while it's going to be more competitive, there are also going to be cards I can use for the things that I'm wanting to do. And that's something else that, you know, with us being on the internet and having all these people that we can talk to, talk to an older player, like, I have been so surprised when I've been at an LGS and, you know, I think I know every card that's going to be, that's in black, you know, like that's my favorite color. I think I know everything. And I'm always surprised when I'm talking to someone new and they're just like, Oh, what do you build? And I tell them, Oh, have you tried this card? And just, Oh, that's a brand new card. That's now in my arsenal that I didn't know about. Like the second I found about, found out about ashes to ashes, that's pretty much went in every deck that can play it. I'm Um, shocked. I'm shocked. You don't play uh, Gravestorm at all. I I do or bitter but ordeal, do. sorry. Yeah, I <laughs> that's one I just kind of like I haven't found a deck that I'm super in love with it yet. You should put it in your Negan deck. You think so? It's for every yeah. permanent that goes to the uh goes to the grave this turn, you copy it. It's a uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite cards uh in my TAM deck is because I get into uh again, I'm a degenerate. So I get into an infinite sacrifice loop with it so that I can just Mm -hmm. make as many things as I want and eventually play Caller of the Claw and have like 150 bears and then sack my 150 bears, bring Eternal Witness back, Eternal Witness comes back to grab me my Gravestorm or my Bitter Ordeal with the Gravestorm and then I just play it, exile everyone's Mm -hmm. deck, pass the turn. That's kind of the thing. I don't know if I've gotten to a point yet where I can do enough... uh like sacrifices to get there with bitter ordeal and i really don't want to five sacrifices <laughs> is enough to be able to go through because it's it's each it's an individual each time so you can look through my deck mm-hmm. and just decide all right there's nothing else i want to take out of his deck forget daniel and then you can go on to brian or you can look through brian's deck and be like well this is nonsense i'm getting rid of <laughs> all of this humility what is he doing wheel of sun and moon so i can't mill him out like you you can go through every individual deck the way you want and like for instance, I play uh, an Animar that is Eldrazi. Ugh. If you were to bitter ordeal me and take out all of the Titans, that really punches that deck right below the belt. I have a Yuriko deck. I call it uh, Yuriko uh, Ramp Tribal to make it not sound so intimidating, but it's actually Eldrazi. Yeah, I get that. Fair. <laughs> Sounds about right. And I'll, I'll say this one more time. I have never owned a Titan in my life. You should. No. I own so uh, many Eldrazi Titans. Feels good, man. So I've, traded, good. I, I've owned so many and I've traded them away. The only Eldrazi, like I'll say Devoid. Devoid Eldrazi are perfect and I love them and I support them in every endeavor. <laughs> uh, I, but, I use them in so many decks. I have one in Tiny Bones. Like it's, um, I the use only them as Eldrazi, graveyard resets. Oh, Tiny Bones. I love that deck. The, the only Eldrazi bones. like I end up uh, keeping that are from... The like original set, I would say, would probably was is, is that betrays because like that's that's me to a T, and um, artisan of Kozilek is also those are solid. Yeah, reanimate, <laughs> reanimate and sacrifice themes. It's very on brand. I have to say, yes. I found um, while playing, there was one card that I've never seen before, but it's Brave the Sands, and it's creatures you can. It's an enchantment, and it's creatures you control have vigilance, and each creature you control can block an additional creature. Brave the Sands is mm-hmm. brutal, and I'm just sitting there going, especially how did you, I not hear about this? Especially if you have tokens, like you're just like, oh, why? I, I swing that, with uh, two things that don't have trample, and you chump block my two six sixes, my two dreadmaw colossus, uh, white creature from Theros. It's like of of a th- 99 hands or something like that. You make it oh, monstrous. Yeah. Yeah. You can block, you can block any amount of creatures. So if you just give that indestructible, you're just set. That's a... Uh, I've been on the receiving end of that before. It's really funny. I can't off the top of my head think of the enchantment that it is, but one of the enchantments in my commander, Isha deck, does the same thing. Enchanted creature can block any number of creatures. And Isha's got pro creatures. Love it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's really nice, actually. Block the world. That's just kind of the thing is like just having the, these conversations and just really 
being a part of the community also really helps when it comes to bringing these like unique decks. Everyone, I think, wants to help everyone else out. From my experience, when you say like, yeah, I'm building this really, like, really janky deck and this is what it's supposed to do. Well, as soon as I say like that phrase to anyone, suddenly their eyes sparkle and we're talking about all these cards that could go in the deck. A really nice thing too is that uh, with with the whole not it's not a nice thing about COVID, but one of the uh, windfall style problem uh, <laughs> not problems one of the like windfalls of the whole coronavirus thing is that it's brought the magic community far like closer yep. because everyone has gone on to servers to try and play magic together. You've met lots of new people. I've played with like hundreds of people that I never would have interacted with. I've seen so many different archetypes. We but instantly on top, have 160 people that we can play with on our server. Yeah, but I was going to say on top of that, like we have an active Discord server. So we can jump into a conversation basically any time of the day, get a ton of advice that is just not our own echo chamber of like, this is my four people I play with. What do they think is a good thing, right? Yeah, it's the, not your meta responding to you. Yeah, like there's people that we talk to just in our own personal Discord that just play so differently than me that it's really cool to see people's like uh, takes. One of the people in our group, uh, another content creator, he actually played a uh, the Kianos and Melodis deck. And uh, I've only ever seen it played as a group hug deck. That's like the, they're the white, blue, green, red commanders okay and uh there it's at the end step you can put a land in and then draws like it's it's i've always seen it as a group hug commander it's it is on the group hug commander list but that's not what he did it's a big ramp one that goes off by casting big x spells and hard ramp it was a really really cool deck and lots of cool combos and you just see so many things that you would not experience if you could only play in person like for anyone who doesn't do it or isn't active on discord I, I just cannot recommend enough getting into some of the Discord servers, like the huge ones like Play EDH, getting recommendations. Like they have like 30,000 people in yeah. there, right? You're going to you're gonna get some different opinions. And even in the smaller ones, like a lot of the content creators, a lot of the Magic channels, like even Command Zone has their own. There's Patreon. Mm -hmm. But just get into some of these Discord channels and just interact with different people that are outside of your play style, outside of your play group. There are people around the world, there are new friends that you're going to have for a long time, and you're just going to see so many better ways that you can do things, like things you would have never thought of, right? Magic's too big of a game for you to to ever consider just the same. If me and Brian brewed 50 decks, they'd all be different decks. Yeah, like I'm, I'm like, when the big Rona is over. I also call it the big Rona. And we can actually go <laughs> back to our stores. Like, well, we can go back to our stores. We can play here in, in, in Alberta, but I'm kind of still on house lockdown. Um, but, like, it's, will my decks, like, even be able to, like, because they're not tuned or they're not built to my own meta anymore. Yeah, they're, they're very different, right? I have, play online now. Yeah, I've been changing things up because this is what I'm seeing when I play via Discord. Like, these are the, these are the people that I'm playing and, like, this is not working anymore. So it's really making me take a step back and go, I got to retune these decks if I want to actually be competitive to play on, on like against the world. <laughs> well, and edit, editing things as sets come out, like there's so many new, uh, Dried of the Elysian Grove is such a good example. There's so many decks that that just can slot into. It's very, very good in any lands matter decks. It's very, very good in Golos. It's great in five color decks for the mana fixing, the color fixing. That card wasn't available, right? And if you just haven't spent the time upgrading, that is another thing to like when when you are brewing out of the box things. You've got to keep up with what is current because your your weird jank idea might have just gotten a huge buff with the set that just came out where all of a sudden you're just like, okay, cool. Like my skip my turn deck, not very good without Chrono Atog. But if I like wasn't paying attention and didn't see Chrono Atog come out, like obviously this is a very old card. But uh, like if I didn't see that, then I'm just, I'm hurting myself by not being able to play more and more cards that are good for my deck and like i keep saying commander's in a good spot right now everyone is very uh anti that sentiment they're like oh well power creep is real and stuff right but but the power creep is although quote unquote real it's also letting people who don't have access to insane cards compete and play on a similar level like i've seen a lot of my friends like be able to just like bring up what they can do so much better now because there's the option, right? You don't need to, 
you're not in the same kind of place where you need to have like a thousand dollar land base to build a five color deck competitively <laughs> anymore, right? Like there's so many different options. Like I just said, try out a and Grove. Right now I'm working on a mono green Najila. Yeah. Like that's awesome. And I love that. going back into that, the uh Dryad of the Ision Grove is in that because in order to pop her off, you know, lands you control every basic land type into in addition. So with that and what Drew's repository, I yep. can still pop off that infinite combo, but I cannot spend lots of money on a five color mana base. Yeah, well, yeah, why. because it exactly, right? Like you see every Najila deck that's like build your warriors and include all the dual lands, and you're like, Well, I don't really want to do that. And green, uh, you know, some house. of them are common, but there's like 150 green warriors, so that helped too. That's pretty awesome. I didn't even realize yeah. there were that many. Yeah, well, and oh yeah, and I, I found that on Gatherer, right? So yeah, Gatherer is so much tool. better than Scryfall. Yeah, I don't know. I just love Gatherer. Whoa! And, <laughs> hold on there. And Scryfall just puts Adele into my head because it's close enough to that Skyfall song that I can't yeah. not think about it. I really like uh, Scryfall. I'm not very good at using it. I've been trying to get better, especially as I've been brewing these like more uh, awkward builds. And Scryfall is very, very useful once you start like understanding the syntax for searches. I, uh, I don't know. I just, I'm a fan of Gatherer. We're actually talking about this on the Discord today, and I, I said the same thing. I'm right that, there with you, Daniel. Yeah, 100%. yeah. I don't know. Gatherer <laughs> just seems gatherer. great. Yeah. I'm just laughing because as soon as you guys started talking about this conversation, I just remembered the conversation on Discord. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, what I was going to say is that just in general, talking on Discord, I think, has been the best way to bring up your deck knowledge. Like, there's you. Nobody has. I'm, I'm not a great Abzan player. That's like a. It's not a deck I build. And tell Tam I'd only ever built one, and it was Doran. And Doran is like not really the whole Abzan theme, you know? No, he's just no. You're just playing creatures with big butts, thick mm-hmm. boys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's I literally the name of my deck is Doran Big Butts. Like big. <laughs> like I, I get it. Plays at Alpha. Yep. Double strike eight eight or four eight with double strike, but. Yeah, no, like you, yeah, like so when I'm when I'm trying to get into more reanimator themes, I'll I'll typically talk to like Zach or I'll talk to Hope and I'll just say like, what's your guys's thought process on this? Like, is there a more efficient way to get this into my graveyard or to like make people sacrifice creatures? Right. The same with Orzov. I don't really play very much Orzov unless it's to gain life because just gaining life. So like I, uh, when I made my Crab and Regna, like I looked at Sherman's list. That was one of the first like places I stopped because there were so many interesting examples of like cards I hadn't thought of because Sherman also loves to he plays go, the jank. Yeah, he likes to just go through and like find like weird answers that aren't common. And the other thing about building out of the box things is nobody knows buying these cards. Yeah. Yeah, if it's exactly. not it's, if they're not popular, then usually you can get them at a cheap price. Yeah. Well, and I, I don't know about anyone else, but one of my favorite things to have people play or say when I'm playing is like, Oh, I've never seen that. That's so cool. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I I hear that all the time. Like when I just play like silly cards, like uh, a, a really good example. (laughs) Yeah. We, we played with someone who'd never (laughs) heard temple. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, He's just like, my, my meta doesn't play that. Like they, they would not give that advantage away. I'm like, Oh, I play temple bell all the time. I love temple bell. Right. But uh, oath of Legions is a really good example where you can go and get the basic lands. Like, Every time I play that card, I'm just like, I've, ne- I've never seen this. Like, what is this? Like, why are you playing this? Yeah, why are you giving me an extra land? Yeah, you know, like, I, I really like being able to see just uh, different interesting cards that I just don't come across. Whenever someone plays something cool, I'm like, this is awesome. I've never seen this. I, I just if found one. Since 97, like, if you see a card that you didn't know existed, then that's got to be pretty cool. Yeah, one of my favorite things in person is to be like, can I take a picture of that card quickly? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, like, I think um, for me, like, it's actually, I think I just lost the train of thought that I had. Um, (laughs) But You would hope it's something about that room. Yeah, I know, right? New lights, maybe. I'm just in awe. Um, But, like, going through, like, playing card, again, playing against people, you see new cards and you just go, do you know what? Like, that would work really well in this deck. And then if I tweak it a little bit, then I'll be able to, to go around and, do things differently or like daniel mentioned you can speed things up or make it more 
um, oh, what's the word? Starts with a C. Consistent. Yeah. Well, yeah, like consistency is so good. And like sometimes, sometimes just seeing that one last card, that weird thing that you'd never seen before or finding it, you're just like, this would tie the deck together so well. This like this whole like adding an extra theme, like you said, with your Sano deck, right? Like the Enrage, adding the pingers into it. I bet that just like oh, yeah. changed the like I just bet it changed how good the deck is. Oh, and I have way more fun with it too. Oh yeah. I, I can imagine. It sounds like it'd be a blast to play. You won't block and deal damage to my creatures? Fine then. I'll take it's it like, and uh, do it myself. I'll do it myself. Liar liar when it's like I'm kicking my ass <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> it's uh, kinda like that. I love playing like really stupid cards. Like I play like Liar's Pendulum in a few games. Where it's just like uh, name a card and then they can guess if it's in my hand and I can reveal my hand. And if it's not like if they guess wrong, then I can draw. But I don't have to reveal my hand. I love play just like stupid things like that. And I'll be like Volcanic Island. They're like, no. <laughs> All right, it's here. <laughs> I, like I just I love playing like silly cards that you don't see very often. Uh, the whole Bruvac is just making me look at those weird like one off like hedron crab style like really low mana mill cards because yeah that's one of the ones i'm building right now and i just think that that deck is dumb i got one too from dante i you, can't wait to build it you got a <laughs> I'm so too. excited you me and jacob will just really just make someone hate the game i got a brewvac but i traded it for a tiny bones tiny bones i would have taken that trade <laughs> yeah i love tiny bones oh, yeah. that's uh i i played that deck that is a fun deck to play but you can it salt was very the table. cool Oh, so I, I actually got my thought back. So what? Uh, one thing that I really like to see is when when like the the spoilers and everything are coming out, and most people are they're all excited about the rares and rares and mythics and everything like that. But then you're like opening your box and you're going through, and you're just like, "This is common." You're like, "This is a cool card." Yeah, like how come no one was talking about this during the spoilers? Is feed the swarm I won't get common into or uncommon? It, but I get excited if I see a bird in the background in the art, but I won't get into that. <laughs> just, you just love your bird ones? Yeah, you were talking about... Well, even... Actually, like, let's... We're, we're getting pretty close to the end here, but actually talk about that one that you've been spending a bunch of time on. Like, not the specific theme, but just, like, what you're trying to... What you're trying to find in it. Like, how, how long have you been building this deck for? Well, I've been building it for uh, two years because, like, I could have just you know, gone through a bunch of arts, slapped it together and called it done, but I want the right cards. Um, and the right cards for Scale Bird Tribal. This is a man of principle. Scale Bird, <laughs> bird <laughs> Tribal? Yeah, so, you know, and Dragon, the Odd Dragon too, or Griffin, but um, Scale Bird Tribal, Rayhan and Vile Smasher, they both have birds or dragons in the background, so it's ah. Jund, Scale Bird Tribal. So it's and like every bit of book art, deck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you better believe with Rayhan's ability, when uh, the Battle Bomb doubling season came out... You're just like, oh, oh my lord. Yeah, that's that Coliseum with the birds in the background. My heart just jumped in. <laughs> You're just like, I can finally do it, yes. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the Ultimate Masters Kadama's Reach had some scale birds in that as well. So like my slowly and surely my mana base is getting better, my ramp cards and like the actual support cards. So I don't know when I'm going to finish it, but I'm pumped. It is every new stat just, Hey, Oh, that's a really good rare. Oh, does it have bird in the background? Oh no. Ah, shucks. You can, you can shove <laughs> keeper of the accord in there. That is just a silly card. I forgot about it until recently. Oh, yeah. And actually uh... anybody listening, if you want to um, link me, some cards with uh, birds in the background, some scale birds, feel free to add uh, some gnarly cards on Instagram. I would very much appreciate it because, you know, there's a lot of cards in Magic. I don't have that kind of time. And, and you you know that there's no, like, search feature. Birds in the background. Birds, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Green cards, wish, background man. birds. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, Scrapple can't see. do that. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm sure someone will tell me that I can. <laughs> oh, actually? I went you, in and I changed the code. If you look at the syntax, you can find anything that has a uh, white sky in the background. You might be able to. I don't know enough. I'm not even going to pretend that I do. Oh, man. If but yeah. I've been building this deck for two years going through cards and you tell me I could have just done it on Scryfall, I'll... Oh, my God. Lose my mind? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I also generally, like, I, I love to pull up, like, keyword searches and just, like, go through and see. Like, you type trample, 873 results. 
you got to yep. narrow that down a little bit. But I just love looking through and just seeing, hey, there's cool cards that I've never seen with Trample, with Landfall. Like, yeah, looking at it, a Johnny Valiant Protector. Didn't even know it had anything to do with Trample yet. No, oh, I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, even even just that, like, right now looking at it, it's minus 11 on a Johnny Valiant Hunter. Is put X11 counters on it where X is your life total. That creature gains <laughs> Trample until the end of the turn. Oof. Oh, my God. Okay, now I know what I'm building. That's a big boy. <laughs> but yeah, um, I actually want to know like how other people end up brewing their cards. Like, what do you guys like? Not cards, their decks. What do you guys do? Like, if you want an out of the theme, like a uh, off theme. Yeah, out of the box theme, but not. Out this of is going to sound box. really silly, but I don't know if you've seen Wolf of Wall Street. Yes. So when they're trying to sell Leo that pen, and he's not looking for a cookie cutter answer. Mm-hmm. You just pretend that he's holding up a commander. Yeah. And he says, sell me this commander. I like that. I'm right. going to name the episode that. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, sell me this commander, brewing out of the box. That's the episode name right here. Ba -da -ba. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I want to know how everyone else builds. Uh, Brian, you can let everyone know where we find them. Uh, thank you so much, Benson, for joining us today. Where can they find our cool. stuff, Brian? So you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, as well as uh, if you enjoy the show and enjoy our content, check us out on Patreon. And every Tuesday now, we have moved our dates for our streams. You can come and watch us on Twitch. Uh, if you come in next week on Tuesday, it's going to be actually mine and Zach's birthday. Yeah, definitely go give Brian and Zach the love. Yeah. Um, I don't believe I'm... Oh, yes, and our website, intothe99.com. You can find all our articles and all of our episodes and just... Actually, it's a one-stop shop for all our content. Yeah, exactly. Everything that we do goes there. Instagram feed, our YouTube videos. You can find it all at www.intothe99.com. Or uh, just there's link tree for each of our individual yep. things on all of our socials. All our social medias. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Till next time. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Bye.